Hey guys, today I'm going to show you four ways you can actually control a Wi-Fi smart blind. I'll be showing you how you can set this up and how you can integrate it into the four major smart home players. Amazon, Google, Home Assistant and HomeKit. So let's start with the why. What automation can we actually create? So the simplest automation to do is a sunrise sunset. So at sunset, we want our blinds to go down because there's no light and that keeps us safe because we don't want people from outside being able to look in when we have our lights on. On the other hand, on sunrise, we want the blinds to come up automatically. So in that way, natural light is coming in and we don't have to put our lights on. And there's also another use case for this. When you're outside of your home, perhaps you're on holiday or you're staying somewhere overnight, you can have your blinds going up and down anyway. And that will sort of simulate the fact that the house is occupied. Big shout out to Ajax Online. We have sent this demo unit over for me to do this video. I'm going to leave a link in the description below so you can actually go and check these out. Now let's get going and let's roll the intro. This unit isn't a battery powered unit, it's powered with mains, so you don't need to worry about changing batteries. However, you do need a mains power close enough to the blind. The core that we get with the unit is around 2.5 meters. I'm quite lucky because with my setup, I've got a socket right under the blinds. Because it's powered by the mains, it can actually use Wi-Fi instead of using a low powered protocol like Zigbee. Why is this actually relevant? Because you don't really need a gateway or an additional box to connect your blinds and operate them. So you can use these guys out of the box just as they are. What they'll do is they'll connect to your network like your phone or tablet or anything else. To install this, it took around five minutes, but read the instructions really carefully. Get this template out and you can see over here, you have four holes. Two holes were for left and two for right. What you'll do is you'll put your cord around over here on the top and depending on where the blind is situated respect to the window, you will go to left if it's on the left, you'll mark right for the right. Now once that's done, you'll find the other unit where you can then put it in and add the screws. What I did, I used some 3M adhesive stickers because I'm not really sure on the final position of this. I'm gonna keep it in this room or I'm gonna move it somewhere else. Be aware that stickers are not really recommended. It's really better to actually use screws to secure them to the wall. Once you've secured them to the wall, you're gonna to need to find the right attachment based on the cord that you have. So take the cord, hook it around the accessory, put the case back in and click it, clip it. Once you've clipped it, at that stage, you can just slot it in the wall plate and that should be it. You can regulate the height if you want it, but remember that the cord needs to be tense in a way, not too much, but not too wobbly. Now, right underneath the unit, there's going to be a little lever. Now, it's not easy to find, and I suggest you have one of these little pins to move the lever. So you're going to need to move the lever, basically, so that up is up and down is down. This will depend on where you put the motor compared to the position of your windows. Now, before you actually download anything or any apps, you're going to need to do a couple of more things. You're going to need to set the actual drop. You, first, you need to set it up going up. So you'll press the stop button and the up button and wait until the blind pulls up completely. Once you're happy with it, you will tap and press on the stop button for at least six seconds. Once you've done that, you'll do the reverse on the down button. So you'll tap on the down button. This time, you'll just single tap at, on the stop and then that should be it. Test it out once at least. So press up and see if it goes all the way and it stops at the right uh, point and then press down again. Now, if you get this wrong, I would suggest you factory reset it and you start again. Now that we've got it all set up, you can pull your mobile phone out and download the Smart Life app if you haven't got it already. Once you've got this app set up, you're going to need to press the plus button, search for curtains. I'm picking the Wi-Fi curtains version. And now what you need to do is you need to go and pair it to your own Wi-Fi network that you want to pair it to. We're gonna to need to put it into pairing mode before we actually go ahead. Go to the device, tap on the stop and up button, and hold that for at least five, few, five, few seconds. You should see the LEDs blinking and now it's gone into pairing mode. Once it's in pairing mode, go back on the app, say you're, it's blinking, go continue. Once it paired up, give it a name. I'm just calling it blind, make it simple. Now that has been done, I would test it again once with the app. So press up to go up and down to go down and see if it all matches and it's all working. Now that we've got it all set up, let's jump into the full smart home integration that we're gonna do in this video. 
first one, let's go into Amazon and let's find out how do we do that. So we're in the app here, we've got a home button and ignore everything else I have. We got to be just be focusing on the blind now. So tap on me. We've already got our third party voice services. The first one is the one for Amazon. So you would tap on that. Now you're going to need to sign in into your own account. So click tap on sign in with Amazon. It's going to ask you if you want to link it, you will just tap link. So in my example, I really linked it, but you will actually need to authenticate with your username and password. Now let's try with Amazon's voice assistant. Open blinds. And as you can see right behind me right now, it's actually lifting up. Now let's look at Google. So to actually get this working again, very similar to the previous one. If you watch it, so go to me, go to Google assistant. Now you're going to need to go and authenticate into Google with your username and password. Once you've got that, you should all be able to be set up. Close the living room blind. Now it's actually start to close. So as you've seen, that was pretty simple to set up and it didn't take even that long to pull down. Now, if you're getting value of this video and you want more videos like this, press that like button. If you want to be notified when the next video comes out, then subscribe to the channel too. As you know, my smart home is built with Home Assistant and that's my automation platform of choice. So obviously I'm going to try and integrate this in the Home Assistant. If you're completely brand new to Home Assistant, you don't know what it is. It's quite powerful, it's open source. I've got a free course in the description down below, which is going to take you from knowing nothing about it right up to having it installed and understanding some basic concepts. Now let's have a look at Home Assistant. So right in here, we've got our dashboard, a personalized dashboard that I just created just for these blinds. We have our blind over here, as you can see, it's yellow, meaning it's open. And we've got an open symbol over here. Now let's see how we actually got to this. So you're going to need to navigate down here to uh, the configuration page, click on the integrations page, scroll down. Now I'm using Tuya. You can also use local Tuya, but I recommend if you're just starting out with smart home and home assistant, start with Tuya first and then you could do local Tuya in the future. Now Tuya is very simple to set up. I've already got it set up as you can see over here, where you just tap on add integration, search for Tuya. You'll click on Tuya and then here you will log in with your username and password. Now, once you've clicked on the devices button, you should see only one device and this is your blind device. Now the name that you'll see here is the name that you actually you gave it in the app. Click on this device and here you have the entity. Now you can just directly click add to Lovelace and I will put it in uh, Lovelace beautifully. But what I would do is I would just click on blind and rename the entity ID to whatever you've called this. For example, cover, leave cover dot and just rename anything that's after this and just put blind or living room blind or whatever you put. Click on the update button. So that's nice, neat and, and easy to use. So out of the box, you can have this blind over here. So click on edit dashboard on three dots, edit dashboard, tap on add card, search for entities, click on entities. In here, you can remove the or everything that's already in here and just search for cover. And then you should have only cover the blind. Click on it, click save and you can see it over here. Now you can control the blind from Home Assistant. So you can click on the down button to lower it. You can click on the stop button to stop it. And then once it's lowered, you will be able to click on the up button. So you can't click on it now because it's really up to pull it up. Now I'm not too fan of this little um, arrow thing. So I wanted to add this in to make it look even better. I'm going to show you the code to actually achieve this, but you'll find and you can copy and paste this code in my blog as usual. Just open up another tab, Google Leonardo Smart Home Makers blog. So once you're in your Visual Studio Code or File Editor or anywhere you added your YAML files in Home Assistant, jump into configuration.yaml. In the configuration.yaml file, Look for cover if you've got it already. If you haven't, just add this line here in line 13, add cover in. Once you've done this, got it in, you can ignore from line 14 and line 42 because that's for my garage door. So at that point, you'll have things from line 45. You'll start uh, calling your blind, whatever you've called it. First thing to do over here is to replace this with the name of the actual room. 
So this could be living room, kitchen, or whatever you've called it. Device class will be blind, so you keep this as is. Brand new name will be just Creation Room Blind. And we've got to set up four things, basically. The open cover, the close cover, the stop cover, and the icon template. The open, the stop, and the close represent the actual free physical button on the device, and also the free button that you saw on the dashboard earlier. Start with the open. So our condition is going to be the state of the blind and you can leave this as it is. You just need to replace this with whatever you've called your blind in your own app. So this could be kitchen, living room, blind, whatever you call it. You can keep this as it is. So what, basically what we're saying is that we will be only be able to open the blind if the blind is closed. Okay. So this is basically what this means in between these lines over here. Close cover. You can do the same thing, but the opposite. So you'll be able to close the cover only when the state is opening and stop. You can stop it uh, if, uh, at any time and you will do stop cover. And as you can see, it doesn't have a condition because you can stop regardless of the state. The last part uh, is an optional part is the icon template. This will do the fancy icon changing. So the icon will change depending on the status of the blind. So the blind is open we are using blinds dash open and you can see a preview of it over here else we are showing the blinds as closed and then we have our and if to close this whole code so your whole code basically is from here over here and then you need to add line 13 to now once you've done this save the configuration at yaml file Check your configuration file and restart Home Assistant. Go back on your dashboard, go to your three dots, edit dashboard. Now click on add card, find a button card, get rid of this entity over here. Just search for cover and now you'll find your new cover. Beautiful uh, one over here and change the tap action to more info and save it. Now let's give this a demo. So if you tap on this, we should have our arrows and they're exactly the same as what I've got underneath here. So let's say lower and you can probably hear this, but we are starting to lower our blind. As you can see, it is lowering right now. If you go back into Home Assistant, you can already see the status already changed immediately. So this is a little bit maybe of something that could be perfectly for a perfectionist. Maybe you want to see it actually maybe midway, but it's basically it's either all open or all closed at the moment based on the code that I written. The three down, one to go. We've got HomeKit left. Now with HomeKit, this doesn't actually work right out of the box. So there are really two ways that you can get this to work as far as I know. The first way is what I'm going to show you in this video. If you have already Home Assistant up and running, you can use something called HomeBridge to actually connect Home Assistant to HomeKit and expose certain things. And I'm going to show you how to do that. There's also another way of doing this and you can use Siri shortcuts. If you are interested in that and you want me to make a video, leave a comment down in the section down below and I might get around and doing that. Now let's jump into Home Assistant and let me show you how you can set up HomeKit. Okay, so we're in Home Assistant. Again, configurations and then straight into integrations. Configurations here, click on integrations. The HomeKit integration actually is auto discoverable. Now, because I already set this up and I deleted it, at the moment it isn't here, but it was there before. So click on add integration. If you haven't got it, it doesn't matter. Just search for it and you can search for HomeKit. These are a few things that we need to do. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm only exposing the blinds. So I'm assuming you only have the blinds. So in here, in the domains to include, click on this button and basically remove everything else apart from cover. So now you should have only this, only cover. Click on submit and click on submit again. And we're gonna to need to go to notifications to continue the setup. Now you can assign the bridge to an area. I'm gonna ignore that. So I'm just gonna click finish. Now let me scroll down. There's one more thing we need to do. You can see the home bridge over here. Click on options. It gives you a chance to change this. So if you wanna add perhaps more things to expose, like expose cameras, motion sensors, you can do it at this stage. I'm gonna leave it as it is, keep it to cover. I'm gonna click submit. Now in the, you can either do two things. You can either include or exclude certain entities. I'm going to actually click on include and I'm only going to include the blind that I created myself, the one that's uh, with the code. 
Now, if you didn't do the uh, code part in the hummus system part of this video, then you can just use the blind uh, cover dot blind. But for that, remember you need a two year integration uh, for both really. So this is done, click on submit. Um, yeah, we can gonna keep the old start, click on submit, click on finish. Now we need to complete the integration and you're gonna need your uh, smartphone at this stage. So click on notifications. You can have a QR code uh, over here. So go into your home app, click on the plus button, click on add accessory. You should have something like this, add accessory. I'm not gonna use the camera to do this. So I'm going to scan it right now. It's picked up as a bridge. I'm going to tap on add to home. I'm going to say add anyway. And here you can see I, it has found the inspiration room blind. I'm going to put it in the right room. Now this is the reason why I'm only doing one in this video. Let's jump onto the laptop and I'll show you the home app from there. I'm using a Mac. I um, apologize that this is very, very, very small. But if you, if I click on this, uh blind i actually see blind opening signal status is open and you can see it actually opening at this stage we we'll also use our voice close blind okay which room inspiration room okay the inspiration room blind is closing if you don't want to use your mobile phone to control it you can also get a button from the website when you order this device you can select the one with the button option if you want to find out more about building a smart home i'm going to leave the link in the description below where you can find all my smart home courses and my membership too if you want to find out how you can actually start a whole smart home with no tools and no coding click on this next video which you'll find the whole zig needle range and you'll find out how you can set these all up. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Please guys, stay safe. This was Gio from Smart Home Makers and I'll see you in the next video.